And we are live at the GBU Live Campus View Club with the Jeff Capel Show. My name is Jeff Hathorne, but Jeff Capel is not going to lead off the show. Will Jeffress is going to lead off the show based on that second half he had. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. Uh, what a great second half. How were you guys able to kind of turn it around there in that second half and the win over Wake Forest yesterday? I think the the most important thing for us was even going into the locker room, keeping our composure and just entrusting ourselves and our coaching staff to be able to, you know, be resilient and stay together. And so every time we come into the locker room at halftime, you know, it's, it's always positive talk and just preparing for the next play in the next 20 minutes, no matter what happened in the last 20. So people might think that, okay, it, it, it's big speech time. Yeah. But, but was it that or was it more like – Hey, we kind of, we, we know what we need to do. How, how does that work at halftime? Uh, it can go either way, you know. Sometimes it's big speech time, you know. Everybody loves a big speech. <laughs> <laughs> um, but a lot of the times, you know, it's just guys within the locker room just talking to each other, just encouraging each other, putting, instilling belief into each other. And, you know, um, everybody's got remarks and different things that they see. You know, that's even why you have a, a coaching staff. You do, As a person, you can't see everything. And so, you know. We talk to them and communicate with each other then and try and find out how to win. Well, as you know, it, it's a transition to go from high school into college. And you were one that needed to gain a lot of weight, and you have. Mm -hmm. At what point did you feel like, okay, I'm, I'm strong enough now where I can, I can feel I can make a presence down low? I definitely feel like that was um, this last summer. Especially, you know, right after my surgery, before we, I even got to play within the last year, um, I felt like athletically and physically I had just grown as a person. Um, maybe some of it even just came with maturity in general. And so, you know, shout out to my strength coaches, um, Coach Vince, and I'll never forget Coach G too, you know. Um, and so credit to them. And, yeah, that's definitely when I think I – started to just reach a certain level of physicality and peak within my game. How much weight have you gained since you've been in school? So it's a funny thing. When I was in quarantine, before we came, when they shut down the world, um, I was in my house. And uh, I, didn't, I didn't do anything because, I mean, we weren't allowed to. You know, we, I, the first thing I thought was we got two weeks off of school. <laughs> <laughs> So right after that, um, I actually came into college at 178. I dropped like 10 pounds, like from quarantine, just from sitting around pretty much. And so once I got here, I just started to continue to put on weight and continue to grow. And so, I mean, ever since I first stepped foot into college, I put on like 30, 35 pounds almost. Wow. Yeah. When I was wow. playing in high school at McDowell, I was about like 190 um, on a good day. <laughs> um, but, you know. Um, as soon as I got here, I was 178, and I just continued to go up from there. So how much different of a player do you feel because of that weight? Uh, you know, you could ask anybody in a game, in any sport, when you put on muscle and you start to stretch and you feel more athletic, like within your body and within yourself, it, it changes your game to a whole different level. And um, at any point in time, that can help you within a game, whether that's conditioning, whether that's strength, playing defense, getting off the floor, offense, um, drives, cuts, shooting, no matter what it is, it helps you out a lot. What are you, you're 20, right? Yes. All right. So I'm going to warn you, if you spend two weeks sitting around the house when you're older, you're not going <laughs> to lose weight. <laughs> I can tell you that from experience. It's not going to come off. It's going to come on. Yes, and it's going to sure. be harder to take off. So just, just watch that, sitting around the house. Don't think that sitting around the house means you're always going to lose weight. <laughs> uh, when you get into those physical contests, I mean, Wake Forest was – they were pounding the ball down low. Mm -hmm. I, do you enjoy that, those type of battles where you're just it, – you're, you're having to hold your own, you're, you know that you need to – what you need to do down low? No, for sure. I mean, at any point in time in the game, um, one of the things that coaches were stressing to us was about having competitive urgency. And, you know, anytime I check into the game, that's why I try and have um, – I'm a competitor at heart. You can – I think one of my favorite things is Jorge always calls me a tryhard. <laughs> no matter what, no matter what we're doing, it could be Monopoly, Uno, basketball, FIFA. Like, no matter what we're doing, he calls me a tryhard because I'm trying to win. Like, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And so, you know, um, 
when there's a challenge presented to me um, on the court within my life or anything like that, I'm willing and ready to overcome it. And so I get excited about it. All right, Guillermo was telling us, I think it was two weeks ago, about the Monopoly you guys were playing on the road <laughs> trip and that there's a lot of yapping that goes on. Are you one of the yappers? Or are you one of the guys that's like waiting for the next turn? Um, I'm definitely a yapper, um, <laughs> especially coming into this year, like, you know, our team, like, we enjoy each other so much, like, just as friends and as, like, a family, and that's the culture that we've tried to build. And so, you know, I, I think it's, it's funny. If you, if you mic'd us up for a day, you would think we hate each other. It's hilarious. <laughs> like, nobody is nice. Everybody's talking trash, mess, like, yapping. Like, it's – but it's beautiful. Like it's just <laughs> you wouldn't you wouldn't even believe it if you if you heard it. I swear. Are you cutthroat Monopoly guy? Oh my God, yes, one hundred percent. Our youngest boy, and I, I have to admit, I I have done the <laughs> because the frustration of being stuck on one of those hotels. Yeah, that's the you know. I, I love Monopoly. I grew up playing it with my dad all the time, so credit to him for teaching me how to play a very good game. <laughs> we, we are, I don't know, 100 or so yards from the court as we sit right now. Were you guys feeling the pressure of, like, of playing at home? And, you know, you'd had some tough games. Was it getting to the point where um, – did, and did yesterday's result kind of take that away if there was any? Um, you know, we, we talked about it as a team, just how, like – um, when we've been on on away games, going on the road, we've we've played great. We've we fought. We've been resilient. We've been road tough, and um, we've taken advantage of being on the road and taking over people's home court. And you know, we talk to each other about how we have to actually defend our own instead of accepting and cheering at the boos that we're getting. We want to hear the cheers of our own home fans, and we want to give them that. And so, you know, it was imperative to us to to win that game all right sure. will only had two points in the game but what a two points it was <laughs> <laughs> i want to ask you about that play uh, as we continue with will jeffress here on the jeff capel show on the pit panthers radio network all right we are joined by will jeffress uh let's go right to that play it's an inbound play you guys are coming off a timeout um typically if i'm correct you get you get the inbound and then you hand off to a guard Right? Mm -hmm. That's, I'm not giving the play away. I'm just <laughs> saying what happened. Um, you're, you're in that huddle. How does that come about? And when do they tell you, like, okay, here's what we're going to do? Um, so usually I'm not in the five position in general. So um, most of the, the plays and stuff that we're running, like I'm getting directed how to do them on the court while, I'm, while we're playing. And so, you know, we're going into the out-of-bounds plays, and usually Kate was, you know, telling me what to do, screen up, pop out, do this, that, and the other, because, like, like I said, I'm usually not in that spot. And so um, we ran a play before, and I handed it off, and, um, you know, we got to our five out and stuff like that. So while we're in the timeout, they, they told me they were drawn up to play, and they told me pop out, and when... I had the ball. They told me when I was handing the ball off to Bub, Efton was jumping the, jumping the gun to do the black. And so as he's jumping the gun, they tell me, keep the ball. If he jumps the gun, rip baseline, there's going to be a hammer screen on the backside where if the help comes, Blake is going to be wide open in the corner off the hammer screen or the person who sets the screen is going to be ready for a dive. But if they don't help, you know what to do. And so, um, while they're drawing the play up, um, I knew that I was going to catch the ball, and they put me in a position to be a playmaker. And so, when I seen Efton jump, like, just a hair, I, I smile. <laughs> 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 I was ready for it. Because right before we walked out in the huddle, I told, um, uh, I told Ish and I told Fed, I told them, I'm about to dunk this ball so hard. <laughs> <laughs> And I was hoping I because I'm not going to lie. I, if somebody came into the help, I'm sorry, coach, I was still going to dunk it. <laughs> charge, charge, block or not, I, was, I had my mind made up. And so, you know, I appreciate them for drawing up such a great play and trusting me to be a playmaker within that position. So. Were you ever a quarterback? 
No, I was not allowed. It's kind allowed. of like an option play almost. I was not allowed to play football, and I was I was actually really sad about that. My middle school career, my, my parents, like I asked them every single day, can I play football? No, no, too dangerous. I, I respect it. I understand it, but, you know. So when you – I mean, there's a bit of acting, I imagine, that goes on here. And you, you pull off the fake, mm -hmm. and you see that lane. I know it's, it's split second, but is there, like, you see that lane wide open, it's like, oh, <laughs> here we go. Nah, for sure. I think within the video, you can see it a little bit. I stumbled a little bit. Um, I'm not sure whether or not I stumbled on my own or I got clipped by Bub's man chasing off the screen, whatever it was. I actually didn't even get as high as I wanted to because when I seen how wide open the lane was – after the game, when we got back into the locker room, we were celebrating everything. I was telling them, I was like, man, if I ain't stumbled, I would have windmilled it. <laughs> so, you know. Um, I, I, w I wish you all at home could see Jeff's, <laughs> Jeff Cable's face right now. Like, uh, I think that was perfectly good. Yeah, 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 for because, sure. Because, you know, there are times where, I don't know, maybe officiating could be questioned. As you hung on there, I'm like, oh, please don't call him for a technical. Don't call him for a technical. Don't call him for a technical. Um, but that was a play. That was one of those spark plays in the second half. That had to have been mm -hmm. a ton of fun. You mentioned you, know, you knew what was going to happen there. Yeah, it was It was a ton of fun. It was like, you know, after they were drawing it up in the huddle, you just visualize how it's going to happen. And so, you know, my mom pointed out to me the the pull up on the rim for the tech. And I like in my mind, that's <laughs> not e in my mind, that's not even close. Was not that the first close. thing she said to you? Said to you? Was nah. it congratulations first? Was it? You almost got a tech. <laughs> <laughs> nah, she said congratulations for it. She loved it. Um, you know, it was just the energy play. You know, when you land and it's you could, uh, when you watch the replay, you see me scream. I, that was out of no thought. That was just pure energy and effort coming out of my body. And so, um, yeah, it was just, it was exciting. That was awesome. That was congr congratulations. I know you got class. What class are you off to? I am off to small business management. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> well, you. While, while you're gone, uh, we're going to talk to your coach about you. So it's easier if you're not here. So we're going to take advantage <laughs> of that time. Good luck in class. Good luck against Notre Dame on Saturday. Uh, thank appreciate you. I appreciate it. Will appreciate Jeffress Jeff joining us here on the Jeff Capel Show. We will talk about Will with Jeff as we continue here on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. We are at the GBU Live Campus View Club here at the Peterson Event Center and joined by head coach Jeff Capel now. Um, that's a – it's a good young man. Great young man. And, and it's, you know, you, you pointed out post-game, you were maybe 10 seconds into your, your opening statement and about how, I mean, here's a guy who had two points but made such an impact in that game yesterday. Well, it's a perfect example of, number one, staying ready. That's the first thing. You know, Will hasn't played a lot in the past couple of games, past few games. Um when he's gotten in the game, he's done good things, but he just hasn't played a lot. And he had played about maybe two minutes in the first half. And so he sat, you know, for the first 10 minutes, I think it was, of the second half, 11 minutes. Um, but when his number was called, he was ready. And he was ready because Will's a guy that always has a positive attitude. He's an unbelievable teammate. He's an unbelievable young man. He's gotten so much better. You know, I think we tend to forget, people forget, when he got here, he was 16 years old. Um, Damn. Yeah, he was 16 years <laughs> old because he graduated high school a year right, early three, to three come years. here. Yeah. And um, you talk about the weight gain and the growth. I actually saw it two summers ago. I thought he was ready to make the jump, and you could see the physicality and the confidence that it gave him, and then he hurt his toe and he was out for that season. I thought that helped him grow mentally. I thought that helped him, you know, to understand even more how much he loves the game and the passion that he has for it. And then he got to watch a group, to be a part of it, but to watch a group that was so unbelievably together last year and how they fought for each other. And he is one of the leaders on our team. He's one of the most respected guys on our team. And the impact that he had last night goes well beyond any stat because he's a guy that came in and just not just gave our team but gave the building a jolt of electricity, a jolt of energy, and it just spread throughout everything. Our defense picked up when he was in the game, which made our offense pick up, the level of physicality, the intensity, 
the competitive urgency, all of those things picked up when he got in the game. You also mentioned about how he sets screens. Yeah. And it might seem like a simple thing, but how can that also play into this? Well, it was huge. You know, Wake Forest is a team coming into the game. They're in drop ball screen coverage. And what that means is that um, their big guy just drops back. And he's big. Efton Reed is big. He's seven feet tall. And he just tries to protect the basket. And really what they try to do is to make you beat them with twos. If you notice last night, they basically played Blake the whole game in a box and one. Hildreth was face-to-face -face with him wherever he was. He had no help responsibility. Um, and so in the drop coverage, one of the things that's really important is that you have to set the screen. You have to be physical. You have to get a piece of the guy guarding the ball because you have to be able to get the ball handler going downhill. They do a really good job of fighting, trying to fight the screen. So if you don't if you aren't physical with your screen, then it's tough for the ball handler to get it. What they're really trying to do is make you play two on two and shoot contested two point shots. I thought, I thought we did for the most part for the game. I thought we did a pretty good job of screening, but his screens in the second half, man, were powerful, and it allowed separation for Bub to get and get the spots and to get a little bit more separation for those pull-ups, which he was able to knock and, in. And they had called a couple of moving screens yeah. as well, so they were watching that. Yeah, and that's okay. <laughs> I mean, right. I'm fine with that. Right. Um, again, you know, we – one of the things we've talked about with our team is the level of physicality that we have to play with. You're in the media stuff afterwards when I'm up there. That's one of the things that I talk about. Like, we have to be more physical. It, it's I'm not saying, look, Wake Forest was bigger than us. Efton is seven feet tall. Will is six foot seven. But if you have a mindset of physicality and just I, I'm going to fight, then you can overcome size or anything like that. What do you remember about first seeing Will play? I mean, so he's, <laughs> he's Erie McDowell's leading scorer and all-time leading rebounder as well, playing three years Yeah, because he did graduate early. Well, it's interesting. I, I, you know, I actually thought about this last night um, after the game. I set up in my office for a little bit. Watched the end of – I can't remember what game was on TV. Um, Kentucky, Florida. Yeah, maybe. Kentucky, Florida. That's what it was. And I was just sitting with our staff and just kind of trying to relax a little bit. And on my drive home, I was thinking about – because I was so proud of Will and how he played. And I started thinking about my first conversation with him. I was walking around Giant Eagle. <laughs> <laughs> and I had tried to call him the first day that you could call – I guess it's going to your junior year. It was June 15th. And I'd left the message, and then he called me back. I was in Giant Eagle shopping, <laughs> grocery shopping, and I talked to him just walking up and down the aisles for like a half hour. Um, and then the first time I remember going to see him play up there, my son went with me, um, and we, dro you know, we drove up there. It was unbelievable snow. Like, we had to go <laughs> super slow once Shocker. we got you know, yeah. up in that area. But he played really well. I, I just I – I loved him as a kid. I thought he had a high upside because of his age. Even even if he would have stayed for his senior year, when he graduated, he just would have been 17. He had skipped a grade earlier, too, you know, when he was younger. Um, but I just thought that he was a guy that we really wanted and also needed in our program because of all the intangibles that he would bring, not just being a good player, but being a really good kid. I thought he had potential to be an unbelievable leader at some point, um, you know, in, in his career as he got older. And uh, it's really cool to see him growing in that. His family is so unique. If you don't know the story, his, his mom graduated with a Ph.D. In, from Yale mm -hmm. at age 22. The dad played pro ball. Mm -hmm. um, his sister is a, was a college athlete as well. Mm -hmm. What was – the family – the family sit-down must have been fascinating. Unbelievable family. It's interesting because when we were going through the process of him graduating early, it was during COVID, so everything was on Zoom. Um, and But unbelievable family, unbelievably supportive. You know, the other thing I thought about on my ride home, uh, I think it was after year four here. Yeah, yep, it was after year four, and – it was a really hard year. I mean, a really, really hard year for us and for me personally because of what, you know, was the least amount of wins that we had and things like that. And after the season, right after we lost to Boston College and we got back, 
I started having meetings with our guys. And I knew we were going to lose some guys. And there were some guys that I wanted to lose. But there were, you know, certain guys that I wanted back, and he was one of them. But I didn't know where he was because our program at the point, at that point, wasn't what I wanted it to be. Not just the wins and the losses, but just our program, the people. It just wasn't what I wanted. So I didn't know. And one of my first meetings was with him. And right away, man, within like the first minute, like the very first thing he comes in, he's like, Coach, I just wanted to ask you, like, how are you doing? Wow, I hadn't had, any, I hadn't had anybody ask me that in a while. <laughs> um, and then he was just like, look, I'm, I'm staying. Like, I believe in you. I believe. And I actually got emotional when he was telling me that because it was a point where I wasn't sure who wanted to be here with me, who believed in me. And, you know, so he's, you know, he means a lot to me. Um, and it's, like I said, it's just been really cool to watch him grow. And I'm just proud. I mean, what a, t- like, you know, for me, I tell our guys when they get here, concentrate on being a great teammate. All of you are talented. If you concentrate on something besides you, your talent will just show up. It will come out. Um, and Will is the epitome of that because he could have hung his head and pouted and maybe he did, just not in front of me. And if he did, I would understand it. Right. You know, when he hasn't played as much and things like that. But it's a testament to him, his character, his family, the values that they've instilled in him um, and the young man that he's been coming for him to stay ready. And because of that, he was able to have that type of impact in that game. 50 points in the second half yesterday against Wake Forest. I want to ask you about the dynamic, kind of how your halftime works. Okay. And, and how that all transpires as we continue on the Jeff Capel Show on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. And we are li- live at the Peterson Event Center here at the GBU Life Campus View Club. Jeff Hathorne with Jeff Capel. You're, you're down 10 and a half, down by as many as a dozen. Um, struggled at home in a lot of January. What changed? Was it just the urgency that, that you described earlier? Well, one of the things we talked about that morning at shoot around at the end of it when we huddled up, you know, I told them, like, listen, we just – we have to stay the course. What's happened to us, especially here, we have not shot the ball well. And I've gone back and I've looked. You know, we had the bye week and afterwards. I've gone – I've watched all of our games. And I think we're generating good shots for the most part. But we've not made shots. But in each of those games, there comes a point where we're not making shots and you could see it where we panic. And it's now it's I got to make a play. And it's like maybe three guys that I have to make a play instead of we have to make the play. And then it affects us defensively. Um, And then the teams that we've played, man, they've made some unbelievable shots against us, against good defense at times. And so I said to them at the end of shoot around, look, I hope it doesn't happen, but we're probably going to go through a stretch, (laughs) but we don't score. Like we're not making shots. We can't allow that to carry over. Like, we can't panic. And that was one of the things that I was proud of, and I talked to them about at halftime. Like, we didn't panic in that situation. Um, you know, we, we, we went in down 10. I actually thought at top we played really good defense. They, they're very good offensively. And we got some great looks, and we missed them. And we talked about, I said, look, I, I think you're playing hard, but we have to play harder. I think we're – we're trying to be physical. We have to be more physical. Like, it requires more. And that's what just getting our guys to understand that as we go forward. Like, more is required to be good. It's hard to be good. It's hard to win. And you have to do these things over and over at a high level. That means how you take care of yourself off the court. That means mentally, you know, what are you thinking about and all those things. And so that was my message at halftime. I mean, I, I go in at halftime, I go right to the locker room, I talk to them. It's probably the first conversation is for about a minute. And then I go back with my coaches, we'll talk, then I go back in at eight minutes, and we'll talk about anything we want to change, anything we want to tweak, what's working, what's not, what we have to do better. Sometimes it's rah-rah, sometimes it's right to the point. It just kind of depends on what I think we need at that moment. So for the players, do they go in, grab a drink, like get a second to just kind of decompress? Yeah, by the time I get there, so we walk off and, you know, I normally am last. And so, again, I just follow them in the locker room. They sit down. I talk to them quickly. 
they're already talking about, you know, like as I'm leaving, I can hear them kind of saying, hey, we need to do this, we need to do this, let's stay positive. They grab something to drink, they do whatever. I'm not in there during that time. One of our uh, guys on our staff, he'll go in and write some stuff on the board, like stats and, you know, what they're shooting, field goal percentage and things like that. Um, and then, again, we go back in at eight, you know, at eight minutes and go through the next part of it. You don't go in and say, okay, guys, check your phone, see what they're saying about how you're playing, <laughs> what you should do better. I don't do that. I don't say that, but it <laughs> wouldn't surprise me when I left if they did that. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me, man. When I was the head coach at Oklahoma, I walked in the locker room at halftime one time, and one of my players was on his phone, and I lost my you-know-what. <laughs> <laughs> what, so. what is the – is there a halftime speech as a player that you remember? I don't, I don't remember a halftime speech. I remember a pregame speech, you know, with Coach K. Um, I don't really remember many halftime speeches, but he had some unbelievable pregame speeches that would have you ready to jump through this window right here. <laughs> I bet. Now, yeah. How do you judge, okay, when I need to, when I need to <laughs> slam a pen down off the floor, when I need to, like, how is the psychological part of that work? knowing that you've got your own emotions working. Yeah, sometimes it's just, I mean, you just feel it. For me, I just feel it. I, you know, when I was a player, I, I tried to play off a of feel, and since I've been a coach, I've tried to coach off a of feel. And so, you know, you just kind of feel moments. Like when we got back, uh, you know, we lost a tough one on Saturday. We were off Sunday. We got back Monday. We watched film. We always do feedback. So we watched the feedback from Miami that I clipped up. And then we immediately moved on to our preview of Wake Forest. And after we finished that, I just told him, I said, look, man, like it's time for us to be good here. Like we've been good on the road. Like you guys have the right mindset or whatever. I'm not saying you don't have the right mindset here. But, man, these people keep showing up for us, and especially the students. And, you know, it's time to give them a performance that they could be proud of here. Like we haven't won in 2024 at home. Like that's ridiculous. So I did talk to them about that on Monday and I tried some motivational stuff. I showed them a, like I'm big into boxing. So I showed them this thing with boxing and talked about, you know, just kind of my thoughts you about it. ever show movie clips? Yeah, we show movie clips at times. We'll add that to like a scout or a preview or things like that, yeah. Do you have a favorite, like? I don't, I don't. <sighs> like I remember the Titans or Rocky the Titans, or something. Like Rocky, one of the funniest, that I didn't do it when I was a Duke. Coach imitated uh, Gladiator. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> yeah. And then he did one time, what, what's the movie with uh, Braveheart. Braveheart? He did the Braveheart, and he pulled out his old uh, West Point sword, and he came running in the locker room and, like, took the sword. Are you serious? <laughs> I'm trying yeah. to physically picture that. Oh, man, he was awesome. Like, he was, he was, he was, he was awesome. He had some wow. classic ones, yeah. That's, yeah. that's I've done stuff with boxing gloves. I've I've done know. stuff with, you know, remember the Titans and different things like that. Goodfellas is a great scene in Goodfellas. What do I amuse you? Nah, you did not not that not, not that, that, that line. Not that one. <laughs> well, you got to go in and you don't have to say words. You just got to go right to fighting right away. I don't know if you know that scene in the driveway. Oh, with Henry Hill. That that's. Yeah, that's that, that's yeah. towards the end, isn't it? No, nah, it's like right in the middle. Is it right I, in the middle? It's been a while since it's one of my favorite movie. movies, man. So. It is a good movie. <laughs> that, that's interesting. Whatever it takes, right? Whatever it takes. You just, you know, <clears throat> young people, like you have to do things now, especially to keep their attention. You know, their attention spans are shorter than it was with us because everything for them, I look at it with my kids at home, everything's a reel, you know, and these reels are a minute. And so you have to be quick. Even we've had to do stuff with our scouts to shorten them you know, what we give them because trying to get them to retain all this stuff at one sitting, you know, we'll do things like if we do a, you know, feedback, we'll do feedback in one place. I'll go somewhere else for the preview because I want to, I don't want them sitting in one place, I gotcha. for, you know, for a long period of time. So just trying to do things like that. Another guy who provided a spark for you. And I, I want to ask you this when we come back. It, it, it's kind of an interesting dynamic with Ish Leggett. <laughs> do you start him? Do you yeah. bring them off the bench? I, w I want to get your thoughts on, on how you kind of wrestle with that as we continue on the Jeff Cable Show on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network.
We're live at the Peterson Event Center. We're up at the GBU Live Campus View Club and an opportunity to be here on Saturday for a 6 o'clock tip against Notre Dame. A big game for the Panthers, and it's going to be a special night. Two reunions, the 0809 team, Sam Young, Dewan Blair averaged 16 points and 13 rebound, nearly 13 rebounds a game. <laughs> I mean, LeVance Fields was 11 points and eight assists a game. Gil Brown, mm -hmm. who's on your staff, shot 49% from two mm -hmm. during that season. Like, that was a deep team, a physical, yeah. not afraid of anything team. Really, really good team. Interesting story. So my team at Oklahoma that year was really, really good. Um, you know, we were a top five team in the country for a good part of the year. Um, I thought that we were the best team. We had the best player, and I thought we were the best team. So right around the first week, second week of January, I started watching other teams around the country. I knew Carolina was really good. And but I started watching like if we you know like we're gonna get to the tournament we we make a run like who, and the team that I saw that I did not want to play was Pitt, and the reason is, I knew they would be the one team that would not be afraid of Blake Griffin. Most teams that we played, there there was a fear of him, and especially when they put the video board up, <laughs> and we would show him jump like, literally jumping over people, dunking on people. But they had a level of competitive spirit, physicality that I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'd want to play them. <laughs> um, and we ended up losing to North Carolina to go to the Final Four in the regional final. And that North Carolina team ended up winning the whole thing. And we won't talk about the other <laughs> regional final from yeah. that year. 73-74. Yeah. Uh, you, you've gotten to know some of those guys uh, – Billy Knight was – I mean, he averaged a double-double. He, yeah. he was insane. And it was, there's an interesting stat about that team, too. Everybody was from here. All five starters from Pittsburgh, which is really, really cool. And I can imagine how the city was behind that team then. Um, number one, there were five really good players in high school guys in Pittsburgh. Right. I look back, and I, even that – you know, like you talk about DeWan, who was right around the corner, and that team, his high school team, the guys that they had um, – but the fact that 73-74 team, all five starters from Pittsburgh, I can imagine the pride that this place felt for that team. And people may not – I mean, that era, David Thompson, I mean, and then yeah. the, the, in the 70s, Walton and Lanier and Gilmore and Bird and Magic and – Maravich. Alex English and, and <laughs> Pistol Pete. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a pretty good team you could – and then you, you could bring in a Bobby Jones to play defense no or a Jaminski. Yeah. I mean – Phil Ford. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's you know, it, it's great players in every era, man. Like, I mean, all-time greats. And, you know, we get so caught up in now. And I do think today's player is more skilled. I think just the skill level of these guys now is ridiculous. Uh, but, man, there was some great players but back Maravich then. Maravich had some skill, too. Like. Yeah, it was my dad's favorite player. Yeah. Pistol Pete was my dad's favorite player. So, I grew up listening to him talk about him. He always talked about David Thompson. Um, I asked Dan Bonner, who's been doing ACC games For a since minute. the 70s. <laughs> and I asked him, we played at Duke. He did the game. I said, like, who's the – I've been wanting to ask you this. Who's the best player you've seen since you've been doing ACC games? I thought he would say Jordan or Ralph Sampson because if you look at Ralph Sampson in college, man, three-time national player of the year. But he said it was David Thompson, and it wasn't close. You had an opportunity to be a part of all of that. Six o'clock right here at the Pete on Saturday. Let's talk about Notre Dame and the challenge you're going to face from them as we continue on the Jeff Capel Show and the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. All right, Jeff, in our last minute here, this is one of those teams don't buy the record, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Michael, Shrewsbury is, Michael Shrewsbury is one of the best coaches. I mean, he's a really, really good coach. Um, they play very, very hard. They're one of the best teams defensively in our league. And they have one of the best freshmen in our league in Burton. Um, he's second in the conference in field goal attempts behind R.J. Davis. He's a dynamic guard. Um, they're very physical. Uh, they're well coached. And they play really, really hard. Yeah, he's got a good hand. Like, he's, he seems to be in control for a freshman. Yeah, he is. He is. He's explosive. He's really, really confident. He's Indiana Mr. Basketball as a high school senior. Um, which was a great get for them. I mean, he basically took his recruiting right. class that he had from Penn State 
they all went to Notre Dame. So it's great when you get a new job and you need new players and you take your whole class <laughs> and it's a top 25 <laughs> class. <laughs> well, hey, good luck Thank you. on Saturday. Our thanks to Will Jeffress, to Amanda King, to Joel Nelson, to Matt Plisga, Allison Rubin, and to Jeff. Pre-game 5.30 Saturday, you've been listening to the Jeff Cable Show on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network.